guests, welcome to our campsite review. This is African Overlanding Club. We are in Ngai Pan National Park and we are stationed at campsite 10. Right, so we're going to run through the campsite. We're going to walk around and see how it's set up and basically do a quick overview of what to expect when you come to Ngai Pan. So um, it's quite clean and nice. Uh, they make a good clearing of the campsite. They provide you with a dustbin or a place to throw your refuse. They provide you with a bright stand in case you forget yours. So the camp is nice and big. It will accommodate quite an, a substantial number of people. Right. And then they also provide you with a fireplace which is great so you don't need to start setting up your fireplace. You have a place you can sit all around. It's concrete so you put your firewood and you start your fire immediately which really makes your life easy. It also helps with your planning of your campsite because you then put your tents and cars around the, the fire generally. Um, the campsite is quite close to the ablution block. It's a short walk. It's not the closest. You have other camps on the other side which are directly linked to the ablutions. But campsite 10 is a little distance away. So you need good light to walk between the campsite and the ablution block. The ablution blocks, which is quite great. So we're going to walk around and see the setup. The guys are packing up, so never mind the mess. But we'll just show you around what the guys are doing. Let's go. So. We, we have our brass stand and our food table, which the guys are working on. This is basically the main station because guys are always having snacks, they're always having the food, and all the food is put around the fire and put around the brass stand. Um, we're now making our last meal, which is supposed to be breakfast. I'm not sure what time it is, but this is breakfast for us, and then we're going to head out. All right, so let's walk around. Um, you have your walkway which goes directly to the ablutions. This is about uh, 80 to 100 meters, which in the night does become a fair bit of distance, but during the day it's actually quite nice to stay away from the ablutions because you enjoy the walk and you don't want an influx of people around your campsite. Right. Uh, we have Zola over there working the stakes. We'll talk to him in a bit. We'll talk to him in a bit. He's our resident uh, steak master, the guys are packing up, we're getting ready to, to head out. So, um, so, fun fact, campsite 10, we're told, is actually along the path of where elephants pass. So last night we actually had um, a couple of elephants pass as close as about 10 meters from our campsite. So during the night they passed through. The guys encountered one at around 10 p.m. and then we had another one at around 2, 3 a.m. Generally they stay away from the light so you need to put up your lights around the campsite and they will basically walk around it. But it was very interesting to see the elephant. To say the least, um, the campsite went dead quiet, which was great, but a little scary of course, given the animal that was passing. So generally we try and set up our campsite such that um, we do or we set up in a horseshoe formation around the fire and then the exit point is facing the entrance of the campsite. This allows easy in and out of the campsite but also basically protects the campsite from entry from wild animals. We still had a few jackals come around but you know we can deal with those. Um, the fireplace which we spoke about is quite nice. All your firewood is put there. It's easy to put your pots and it's quite user friendly because it's easy to clean up. You don't need to dig up, you don't need too many tools. You will basically have everything sitting here, your bonfire as well as your cooking spot. And then obviously your all your equipment will sit next to it. Um, Africa, say hi to people. Hi people. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually a great campsite, especially if you want a bit of um, distance from people. Um, you're guaranteed to have a couple of elephants pass, and then you just it just offers you a bit of seclusion from the rest of the campsites. But to Mutake, say hi to the hi. hi folks, hi people. All right, can you explain why your voice is so hoarse? Uh, my voice is hoarse because you know um, it, it's we are right in the middle of winter. So um, we have a resident doctor here, uh, Dr. Kosikumo, 
who actually gave me some medication because uh, he had told me that what I'd caught was just uh, uh, a common cold. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I've been trying to treat. Mm -hmm. And of course he did bring some medication with him, you know, to deal with any eventuality. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool man, glad to see you up and running. Yes sir. Thank you. Guys, we're packing up, so generally you try and keep your campsite clean. You try and make sure everything is neat and packed up. Um, basically you need to keep away any meat, any water from the external areas because you don't want to attract any elephants or any other wild animals from that. We had a couple of jackals come in but you know a jackal you can deal with but um, what you're seeing now is the guys packing up. We Unfortunately we weren't able to shoot while the campsite was fully set up because we, we were quite late in the campsite but generally this is what you would expect and guys would be in the tents um, at night. Mr. GSK you guys are busy with the tent, it's definitely not done right, <laughs> but, <laughs> right but you try, so basically you need to fold it along its length, so fold it from one edge, one edge to the next and then as thin as possible so that it fits in the bag, because you need to fit it along the length of the bag. Uh, but, um, yeah, well I can try, if you guys can, it's easier said than it's, it's, if you guys can put it back where it was. And then you'll see that it's actually, it's very easy by the way, it's just that you have to do it. Uh, yes, right, so let's, that, that's our starting point. And then, your fr yes, that's, that's the first one. That's the first one, that's cool. And then, basically you half it. Yeah, and then you can then roll it from one end to the next. Just a little, a little to the side, yeah, not, not, yeah, just a little, yes, yeah, and then you just need to squeeze out the air from one end to the other and then it will fit in the bag, yeah. Um, unbeknownst to you is B, um, I'm not pompous like you, so, <laughs> yeah. Awesome, 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 awesome. And that will that will easily fit in the bag if even if you need to fold it one end. Easy. Awesome <laughs> cool, thanks. Cool, 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 cool. So one more stop. Hello guys. Um can you quickly tell the guys what's happening here, what you're doing, what cuts you have and so basically here uh, we're making breakfast. So I'm making the steaks. Uh we have a very beautiful ribeye, yes, my man. Mm -hmm. bone in ribeye, also called a tomahawk. <laughs> uh, and we also have prime rib over here. Over here. I haven't started brying that. Uh, I need to finish with the with the tomahawks first. Um, seasoning we used uh, oryx. That's the problem. Desert salt. Uh, this is the wine flavor, and we also have the smoked salt flavor. And then. Um, we have herbs, okay. um, we have coriander seeds, uh, we have uh, rosemary, so basically uh, this will be done in maybe the next 15 or so minutes. We, we wanted medium rare or rare, no medium rare, the guys preferred medium rare. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the long and short of it. Can you explain to the guys why you're having meat in the morning? Um, two reasons, we need, we can't go back with any meat so we are gonna finish whatever is left and the guys love meat <laughs> cool and then quick thing can you please just um, let the guys know how you keep this safe because we're around wild animals so how do you keep these safe from the wild oh, yeah. animals how for, do you store them for the meat if you don't have a fully equipped camper with fridges we normally what we do is we get uh, a vacuum cooler uh, so we have all our meat in the vacuum cooler so if the, we are storing it it's lockable so even if an animal can try to fidget with it it wouldn't be able to get access to, to the meat so the vacuum cooler is quite nice it keeps our meat uh, fresh and cold for at least uh, four days from the time that we put it in so we normally have it for, for our trip so we have fresh meat every day uh, Mr. 
Mabongo, uh -huh. Mkanda and Cock. How you Our resident one connoisseur. Uh, Somali, yeah. yeah, he makes good meals. She made yeah, no. very good wings yesterday. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna try and make an omelette. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, the eggs were in the sun the whole day yesterday, so we don't know if they are parboiled, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Let's oh. see, we're gonna crack them open in a bit. Okay. And then uh, we're gonna try and pair that with, uh, with Zola steaks. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll, we'll pop some big beans and I think that'll be it. All right, cool. Yeah. So we'll come back and see what this man is working on a bit late. Okay, super. Cool, man. No, thanks, man. Okay, right, so guys, you'll see there's a lot of activity here. Um, the guys are looking at the map. So basically, you have no reception here. So your normal um, GPSs won't work. But it's very good to see all the trails, all the distances and basically try and gauge the terrain before you leave we have a bit of a situation with our with our cars so they're not all fit so we're trying to look for the best route the least sand because there was quite a bit of heavy sand especially on the old trail that is used for Naipan. so come through and see what the guys are looking at um right so africa just explain to the guys what you guys are looking at the map what you're looking for how do you decide on your trails and what you're looking for and what you're trying to determine come closer you need to see that all right so we're trying to map a route from where we are to where we had a breakdown and we're trying to loop in something if it works out perfectly we can go to Baines Baobab, but in the interest of time, we may fail, so we need to just follow the route back to where the, uh, the breakdown occurred. Uh -huh. But hey, time, time is not our time. Eh? How, do you time is not how do you read the map? How do you tell which trail is best and how do you decide on which trail to take? Because there's numerous trails from where we are to where we need to go. Right, so we got this Botswana map by uh, Shell. It shows the distance on the route, almost everything. So you will clearly know how long you will take from where you are to get to where you want. And then you can be able to estimate uh, the time, you can be able to estimate uh, actually everything, man. So hey, it's going to be a hard, hard drive. I think, you know, as you know, how meticulously we prepared our spreadsheet of what will be happening and when. Uh, it was just basically a plan and a layout of what exactly we thought we would be doing. But then ever since we got here, uh, we've been inundated with uh, breakdown after breakdown, you know, that set us back and uh, disturbed our plans and completely threw us of balance yeah but uh one of the things about being in the wild is that you've got to make the most out of whatever that it is that you have at, exp uh, at your disposal and so yeah we try to make it work we try to you know to wing it mm -hmm. and then we had to obviously strike out some of the things that we thought we were going to do yeah but we're here we're out here we're happy we saw sunsets we saw sunrises there's a couple of animals and... Yeah, we got to see a lot of game. Mm. Uh, we got to see a lot of stuff, really. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, and then something that I really found intriguing. So, we're here, we're standing right behind the vision blocks, yeah? And then uh, we have these spikes. So, this is... This, this is this is forged, forged concrete and then as you can see there's a metal piece just coming out and it's pretty sharp as you can see they did it at an angle so that the idea was that to keep the elephants away from the solar panel and the geysers that they have here so this whole ablution block has hot water showers in the wild so you know these things it's just meant to keep the elephants away and then as you can see we have an electric fence perimeter just around around the ablution blocks so it's quite interesting this thing actually no elephant can step on it uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. which gives you some peace of mind when you're actually using the ablution blocks 
I guess, yeah, yeah, you know, nobody wants to be running but naked. <laughs> yes, never, never, never. Yeah. We've had a bad experience in Kwete, yeah. so this is definitely very cool. Mm. But like, uh, but was saying, the spikes actually give you some peace of mind that you are safe around here. There's a gate, which, as you can see, you need to keep closed at all times for safety reasons, of course. You basically have these taps and wash basins where people will do their laundry, they'll wash their um, kitchen equipment, which is really, really, really great because it saves you on bringing a lot of water. Um, if, if you need to bring anything in large quantities when you go out camping, it's water for drinking, for washing, pots your equipment and just making sure you are clean all around and for in case of anything you will always need a bit of water so this is really great and uh, there's three of them and i believe there's one on the other side so you will find that people can even wash their clothes you you have campers who stay here for quite a significant amount of time so things like your clothing items need to be washed your underwear your kitchen equipment as well as um, cooking water if you need, need it to be. So this is actually very great and um, useful. Cool, let's come through. You have your geysers, so that can only mean one thing, hot water. Um, we came through at around 7 p.m and generally the water is always hot or at least warm enough it's winter now so if the water is always hot at around that time you're guaranteed to always have hot water the protective barricade with the spikes makes sure that the elephants don't destroy this so it's really 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 nice to have and know that you will have warm water um, before we came to Nai, we were at a couple of places and we hadn't bathed for two days so you can imagine how much we appreciated having hot water come through let's see the actual ablutions see from our discussions earlier the other campsites basically this is seven eight nine and ten eight seven eight and nine are quite close to the ablutions which is great but they also mean there's a whole bunch of traffic and people coming in and out but it's really convenient for you needing to draw water needing to use the men's or the women's or the gents and the women's as well as needing to wash any items be it your clothes or your kitchen equipment so it's really nice with these campsites but unfortunately it means you will not see any wild animals passing through because there will be a lot of light and it's too close to proximity to the ablutions Right, so this is the ladies. Unfortunately, we won't be able to review the ladies because this is a, a group of men, but I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same as the gents, which we will go into in a second. So come, come. So this is Silas. Yeah. So Silas is one of the gentlemen who work for Komai. How do you pronounce it? Komai. Komai yeah. camps, right? So he really did us great service when we had a breakdown. He had to drive all the way to the gate to get the gents get the equipment and bring them back here quite late in the night which is usually a difficult excursion because you're generally not allowed to drive in the parks at night for safety reasons as well as the wild animals of course but he's a very 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 useful man if you come to my pen make sure you book with Komai Komai, right? yeah. Komai and you will definitely deal with Silas um, great having you on our video and on our show thank you very much you're welcome yeah. Right, now onto the ablutions. So as you can see, they're well lit. Um, there's no bulb here, but generally at night there is a light. So when you come through here, you are guaranteed to have enough light to walk in without fearing wild animals. Again, like throughout, you're urged to keep the doors closed. This is to avoid anything going into the ablutions and in summer that actually is useful because then you have creepy crawlies you have your snakes and other bugs that might come through um so please safety first um hopefully there's no one in there because guys come through, come through. so the ablutions are generally very clean guys actually let me rephrase this is awesome this is outstanding this is great 
the ablutions are well kept there's always water there's always um, tissue paper for anyone who needs it the refuse bags are always in and there's quite a couple of them there's basically three um, toilets and then you have two showers which are really well kept as you can see this is clean we have someone who's busy cleaning them now but this is at the worst state so you can really imagine how they look when they're fully cleaned um, this was great all the gents appreciated this when they came through everyone obviously had a visit to the men's to relieve themselves and <clears throat> other things uh, okay cool so let's pop into a shower showers are big so you have place to put your clothes you can hang whatever needs to be hung and it's really big like it's really big uh, almost unusual actually it's really big there's hot water almost 24 7 which is really great especially in the winter but this as you can see it's really well kept they're still cleaning at the moment but um, you have no qualms with using these ablutions and that's that's really great that's really great all right, can we say hi? Dumela? Rokopau du medi seva tsuan. Rokopau du medi seva tsuan. Just a wave. Just a wave. So, yeah, just a wave. Eh, bo, bo, me ba ke ba ne ba 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 ka nyang le hiro. Kisa ke la bona roko pepa ya. Ratata ka boni. Again, guys, how do you pronounce it? Tomai. 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 Yes. Make sure you book with Tomai whenever you come here because they really make sure this place is great but guys yeah generally that's it you have your light so in the night you you have light you can use the ablutions at any time of course you still have to observe safety especially when you're in camp 10 because you have to walk quite a bit of distance so you need a light to carry with and possibly bring someone with you when you walk to the ablutions but in general these are great you can brush your teeth they provide you with a bit of hand lotion the water is always running really great i can't say it enough how important it is to have hot water and with this it's already getting warm so you have running water almost huh, okay the, huh, okay there we go almost exclusively all the time it is really awesome really oh hi hi cool so that's basically it guys with our pollution. We really loved them. We really, 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 really loved these. Especially after a hard two days where we had breakdowns driving in the sand and no bathroom of course. <laughs>